This tutorial is intended to give you an overview for Chem 119, what you should know in the first week. First thing is scientific notation. When you see a small number and you want to put it in scientific notation, you're going to move the decimal place to be a, right after the first non-zero number. So that's 8.560 times 10. We had to move the decimal place 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Because it was a small number when we moved it to the right, it's times 10 to the negative 4. This one is a bigger number. We're going to move the, number, the decimal to the left. So 1.25226 times 10. We moved it twice to the second. Because it was a bigger number that we're making smaller, it's to the positive 2. The next one, we had to move it three spots. 2.9 times 10 to the 3, but because it was small and we moved it to the right, it's going to be to the negative 3. This one, we don't have a decimal place, a decimal written, so we're going to pretend it's at the back. 1.2. These zeros at the end are not significant, so I'm not going to rewrite them. We're going to talk about that next. So when numbers are significant and when they're not is going to be discussed next. So 1.2 times 10, we had to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. It's a big number that we moved the decimal to the left, so it's going to be a positive 4. The last one, there is a decimal here, which means that 0 is significant. So it's 1.30, we rewrite that 0 because of the decimal. We had to move it 2 spots, so times 10 to the 2. To take it out of scientific notation, you're going to do the exact opposite. So if it's negative, you're going to move the decimal to the left. If it's positive, you're going to move the decimal to the right. And that tells you how many places to move the decimal. If by chance you have to move it past the number of numbers you have there, so times 10 to the fourth, you are simply going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, add in those zeros. Just make sure not to write a decimal. That's the most important thing. Moving it to the left, you're going to write the decimals like this. Moving it to the right, you write the zeros, but not, but with no decimal. If you look on your calculator, you'll see the button EE or EXP written there. That means times 10. So to put this in the calculator, it would be 1.30, probably a second function, EE2. It's important to know how to use your calculator now and get the problems with now rather than waiting. All right, for significant figures, the last number in a measurement is always estimated. So if I say 1.23, that 1 and 2 is known, that 3 is estimated. So here are the rules for determining when what numbers are significant and what numbers aren't. They typically come down to the zeros. Leading zeros are never significant. So there's only two significant figures here. Trailing zeros are the ones that give people problems. If you do not see a decimal here, without a decimal, those are not significant. There's only two sig figs here. If you do see a decimal, that means that those are significant, which means we have four sig figs here. So with decimal are significant, without a decimal are not significant. And there are tutorials to go over this in more detail. If by chance you have a definition or a conversion factor, such as 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, you do not count those in significant figures. There is a known entity, and you don't have to worry about them. It's infinite. All right, so calculations with significant figures. With multiplication and division, you're going to look at the quantity of significant figures. So 130 times 55.69 comes out to be 7,239.7. There's Because there's no decimal here, there's only two significant figures. And this one has no zero, so that means all four of those are significant. You take the fewer, so we're going to take the two. So seven, two, 
these then become zeros, so 7200. That's how you round it off. For addition and subtraction, you're going to line up the decimal. So 130 plus 55.69. Add those together as normal, and it comes out to be 185.69. Now look at the place value of the significant figures. For the 130, the tens place is the, le is the last significant digit. And the 55.69, the 9, which is the hundredths place, is the last significant figure. You cut the number off where you see from left to right the significant figures in first. So it ends at the tens place. So that means this is going to be rounded up to 190. So units of measurement, make sure you realize there's a difference between SI units and metric units. For instance, kelvins for temperature for SI, for uh, Celsius it's metric. Meters is the same for both. In SI units, the mass is kilograms, while in metric, the mass is grams. Seconds is the same for both. And then finally for volume, cubic meters is considered to be SI, while liters is considered to be metric. These you need to memorize. There's no easy way around it. Notice that no matter what, this multiplication factor, what it's referring to is how many of the base. So if we look at kilo and we're looking at grams, 1,000 kilograms, 1,000 grams, is equal to one kilogram. All right, so how, whatever base unit of, however many those are, is equal to one of these. So for instance here, 0 0.001, this supposed to be grams up here, let's say meters, is equal to one millimeter. So this is the base, well, it takes one of the prefixes. Equalities or conversion factors. It's uh, one quantity which is equal to another. For instance, 60 minutes is equal to one hour. No matter what, it's always going to be 60 minutes is equal to one hour. When one side is divided by the other, it's going to equal one. So for instance, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 20 divided by 20 is 1, anything divided by itself is 1. So that means 60 minutes divided by one hour, because those two are the same, it's going to equal one. And you're going to be using these for the conversion factors and conversions. One key note specifically for nursing, one cc is the same as one milliliter, or cubic centimeters is equal to one milliliter. That is it one that you are going to need to know. You're going to need to know that you can switch centimeters cubed and milliliters at will because they're the same thing. So for conversions, first you write out the conversion factors you need. Then you put the starting number over one, place a unit on that is on top of that fraction on the bottom of the next one so the units will cancel out. Put the number that goes with that unit on the bottom next to it from the conversion factor. Place the equivalent on the top and do this until the desired unit is on the top of the last line. Multiply the top and then you divide by the bottom. Where you're going from is on the bottom, where you're going to is always on top. So let's take an example of this. We're going from how many seconds are in 1.0 days. I did this 1.0 so that way we can have the correct significant figures. So let's write out our conversion factors first. So we're trying to get to seconds. So in 1.0 days, in one day, we know that there's 24 hours. Then we know one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then from here, we know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So now that I have my conversion factors, we put our starting number over one. Our starting number is 1.0 days. put it over one and we're turning it into a fraction. That's all we did. 
place the unit on the top of the fraction on the bottom of the next unit so that the units can cancel out. So I have days on the top. That means I want to put days on the bottom. So I'm going to look at our conversion factors and I'm going to find days. It's right here. The number one goes with it. So that's going to go on the bottom with it. Place the equivalent on the top. So the equivalent is 24 hours. Now you're going to do this until the desired unit is on the top of that last line. So I have hours on top, so I'm going to put hours on the bottom. Crossing this one out because we've already used that one. One goes with hours is equal to 60 minutes. And then the last line, we have minutes on the top. Cross this out because we already used it. Minutes on bottom. One minute is 60 seconds. So the days cancel, the hours cancel, and the minutes cancel. We're left over seconds. What we're looking for is on the top of the last line. Multiply the top and divide by the bottom. So 1.0 times 24 divided by 1 times 60 divided by 1 times 60 divided by 1 comes to be 86,400. Now, let's look at our significant figures. When you're doing conversions, you want to look at the very first number, our starting number. You see that we have two significant figures because that zero counts because of the decimal. So I want the first two numbers and that's it. I can either say 8.6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, or I can say 86,000 and round it off. Those are the exact same number. And that is what you should be learning in the first week of Kim 119.